Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikabaye Uyanti Atsurayaha Tejo Varimidam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Misha Karmas Reina Sada Niras Tukuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes <clears throat> temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravocha. Paramo nirmatsunam satam Vedyam vastavam atra vastu Shivadam tapa trayon mulana Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite Kimva purir ishwaraha Sadyo hirde avarudya tetra Kriti vihi sususubis dakshana completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam fulam sukumukad amrita drabya samyutam pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam muhur ahoraska bhuvi bhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana 
Hirdian Taksto Abhadrani Vidunati Srit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta pre su abhadre su nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utamas loke bhaktir bhavati naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo, bhava, bhava, tamaloba dayaschaye, chete etare navidam, stitvam satve prasidati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Emam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogitaha bhagavat tattva vijnanam bhakti sangha sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya chidyante jasikarmani jista evat manishwari Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 35. Yada Matsyadi Rupani Date Jayad Yatanata Bubara Shapito Yena Yaho Tacha Kalevaram. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Lord relinquished the body which he manifested to diminish the burden of the earth. Just like a magician, he relinquished one body to accept different ones, like the fish incarnation and others. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Lord Personality Godhead is neither impersonal nor formless, but His body is non different from Him, and therefore He is known as the embodiment of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. In the Brihad Vaishnava Tantra, it is clearly mentioned that anyone who considers the form of the Lord of, of Lord Krishna to be made of material energy must be ostracized by all means. Now, and if by chance the face of such an infidel is seen, one must clean himself 
by jumping in the river with his clothing. The Lord is described as Amrita, or deathless, because he has no material body. Under the circumstances, the Lord's dying or quitting his body is like the jugglery of a magician. The magician shows by his tricks that he is cut to pieces, burnt to ashes, or made unconscious by hypnotic influence. But all are false, false shows only. Factually, the magician himself is neither burnt to ashes nor cut to pieces, nor is he dead or unconscious at any stage of his magical demonstration. Similarly, the Lord has his eternal forms of unlimited variety, of which the fish incarnation, as was exhibited within this universe, is also one. Because there are innumerable universes, somewhere or other the fish incarnation must be manifesting its pastimes without cessation. In this verse, the particular word date, date, eternally accepted, and not the word editva, accepted for the equation, is used. The idea is that the Lord does not create the fish incarnation. He eternally has such a form, and the appearance and disappearance of such an incarnation serves particular purposes. In the Bhagavad Gita 7, Point 24 to 25, the Lord says, The impersonalists think that I have no form, that I am formless, but that at present I have accepted a form to serve a purpose, and now I am manifested. But such speculators are factually without sharp intelligence. Although uh, though they may be good scholars in the Vedic literatures, they are practically ignorant of my inconceivable energies in my eternal form of personality. The reason is that I reserve the power of not being exposed to the non-devotees by my mystic curtain. The less intelligent fools are therefore unaware of my eternal form, which is never to be vanquished and is unborn. In the Padma Purana it is said that those who are envious and always angry at the Lord are unfit to know the actual and eternal form of the Lord. In the Bhagavatam, also it is said that the Lord appeared like a thunderbolt to those who were wrestlers. Sisapala, at the time of being killed by the Lord, could not see him as Krishna, being dazzled by the glare of the Brahma Jyoti. Therefore, the temporary manifestation of the Lord as a thunderbolt to the wrestlers appreciated, appointed by Kamsa, or the glaring appearance of the Lord before Sisipala, was relinquished by the Lord. But the Lord, as a magician, is eternally existent and is never vanquished in any circumstance. Such forms are temporarily shown to the Asuras only, and when such exhibitions are withdrawn, the Asuras think that the Lord is no more existent just as the foolish audience thinks that the magician uh, thinks the magician to be burnt to ashes or cut to pieces. The conclusion is that the Lord has no material body and therefore he is never to be killed or changed by his transcendental body. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So there are several alternate translations to uh, <clears throat> verses here. And from the Bhagavad Gita. And let's take a look at those. So, 7th chapter, 24th and 25th verse. Yeah. Avyaktam, Vyaktam, Apanam, Manyutemam, Abudaya, Param, 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 Bhavam, Ajananto, Mamaviam, Anuttamam. This is a very important verse, 724. And Bhagavad Gita says, Intelligent men who do not know me perfectly think that I, the Supreme Person of God, Krishna, was impersonal before and have now assumed this personality due, <clears throat> due to their small knowledge 
They do not know my higher nature, which is imperishable and supreme. Okay. So then, Prabhupada, here in his purport, he says, The impersonalists think that I have no form, that I am formless, but that at present I have accepted a form to serve a purpose, and now I am manifested. <laughs> so that's his transcendental, that's, that's his, uh, 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 that's his alternate translation of the same verse. So that's Bhagavatam 1, 15, 35. Okay. 1, 15, 35. Then the next verse, here he says, Naham Prakat Sarvasya Yogamaya Saman Vritaha Mudoyam Nabijananti Mam Loko Mam Ajam Abhyayam. I am never manifested a foolish and unintelligent for them. I am covered by my internal potency, and therefore they do not know that I am unborn and fallible. So then the alternate translation is, but such speculators are factually without sharp intelligence. Uh, let's see. Uh, one second, let me make sure. Yeah. So... Um, Though they may be good scholars in the Vedic literatures, they are practically ignorant of my inconceivable energies and my eternal forms of personality. The reason is that I reserve the power of not being exposed to the non-devotees by my mystic curtain. And this is the alternate translation to 725. The less intelligent fools are therefore unaware of my eternal form, which is never to be vanquished and is unborn. So the Bhagavad Gita uh, translation is, I am never manifested foolish and unintelligent. For them, I am covered by my internal potency. Therefore, they do not know that I am unborn and infallible. So the alternate translation is, but such speculators are factually without sharp knowledge, though they may be good scholars in the Vedic literatures, they are practically ignorant of my inconceivable energies and my eternal forms of personality. The reason is that I reserve the power of not being exposed to the non-devotees by my mystic curtain. The less intelligent fools are therefore unaware of my eternal form, which is never to be vanquished and is unborn. So when he's talking about this mystic curtain, this is explained several places. One is uh, Isha Upanishad, where it says, Hiran Mayana Patrina Satyasya Pitam Bukam Tatvam Pusama Pavrinu Satya Dharmaya Dristaye. And also, Yasya Prabha Prabhutu Jagananda Kutim Yaschakti Rasti Jagananda Jaya Jagananda Dad Brahmanis Kotis Vasesu Vasudadi Vibhuti Binam that Brahman is Kalam and Antama Sesu, Bhutam, Govinda Mari Purusham, Tamaham Bajami. So, the first one is the Ishupanishad mantra 15, where he says, O oh my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. So, that covering, that dazzling effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti, is also referred to here. In the, issue, in the Srimad Bhagavatam as a mystic curtain. Then again, Yasya Prabha Prabhavato Jagaranda Kutim Kutisra Sesuva Sudadi Bhuti Binam Dad Brahmanis Kalamanantama Sesu Bhutam Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. In the millions and millions of universes, there are innumerable planets, and in each and every one of them, and each and every one of them is different from the others by the cosmic constitution. All of these planets are situated in a corner of the Brahma Jyoti. This Brahma Jyoti is but the personal rays of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, whom I worship. So, and then further in the Mundaka Upanishad, so in other words, he's saying that the whole spiritual world is situated on the Brahma Jyoti, and that's emanating from his body. And then in the Mundaka Upanishad, it says, in the spiritual realm, beyond the material covering, is the unlimited Brahman effulgence, which is free from material contamination. That effulgent, 
white light is understood by transcendentalists to be the light of all lights. In that realm, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire, electricity, or illumination. Indeed, whatever illumination appears in the material world is only a reflection of that supreme illumination. In other words, the sunlight that we see here is only is the reflection of the Brahma Jyoti coming into the material world. That Brahman is in front and in back, in the north, south, east, and west, and also overhead and below. In other words, that supreme Brahman refulgence spreads throughout both the material and spiritual skies. So, this mystic curtain is hindering the atheists and the apparatus from seeing Krishna. And it's therefore the atheists and my bodies and so forth, they have two coverings. One is Maya is covering them with the desire for sense gratification. And the highest desire for sense gratification is to merge into the Brahman effulgence. You might say, well, wait a minute. I thought that you said it's spiritual. Well, the Brahman effulgence is spiritual and it's eternal. But the desire to merge into the Brahman effulgence, deny one's individuality, and think that one has become God, that is an illusion. And it is actually a material desire. It has nothing to do with spirituality. And that's why uh, the Mayavadis fall down from that position. Okay, so then... And then the second covering is uh, the mystic curtain, the Brahma Jyoti, that's so effulgent that one cannot see beyond it. Therefore, the Ishopanishad in the 15th and 16th mantra are asking Krishna to remove that effulgence, effulgent, let's say, curtain. Oh, uh, oh my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. And then uh, the 16th uh, mantra says, Usan ekase yamasriya prajapatya vyuha rasmin samaha teja yate rupam kaya tamam tate pasyami yosava so purushaha sohamasmi. O my Lord, O primeval philosopher, maintainer of the universal regulating principle of destination. Of the pure devotees, well wisher, the progenitors of mankind, please remove the effulgence of your transcendental rays so that I can see your form of bliss. You are the eternal, supreme personality of God, like unto the sun as am I. Well, that phrase, like unto the sun as am I, means that we are all like a ray of light or a pencil of of light emanating from the Lord. So our, uh, the Lord is the sun and we are one ray of that sun. So, and that, but we are an individual and so the Lord is an individual. And we, he is the God of, God of light. You know, he's the source of all light. Brahmanu hi patistaham amritasya viyasya so he is the the uh, the Brahma Jyoti is emanating from him according to Bhagavad Gita, fifteenth chapter. So therefore, uh, we are like a, a pencil of light emanating uh, in in the from the Lord's transcendental body, and that's a description of the jiva in the Brahma Samhita. <clears throat> okay, so we see that unless we surrender to the Lord, it's impossible to see him because there's so many coverings. Uh, we're covered by the Maya and he is covered by the Brahma Jyoti, but it's not actually covering. The Brahma Jyoti is actually covering us. Uh, just like when we don't see the sun on a rainy day because of all the clouds, the clouds are not covering the sun. They're actually covering our, my, our eyes. If you rise above the clouds, you see the sun shining. So the covering 
the sun, the sun is not ever, never covered by the clouds. It covers our eyes only. Okay, so therefore, uh, this idea that the Lord, uh, as it says in the verse, uh, just like the like a magician, he relinquishes one body to accept different ones, like the fish incarnation and others. That does not mean that he leaves one body. It's a, it's it's an illusion. It's an illusory, uh, let's say, manifestation. Just like the magician is is creating illusory manifestations of himself in one way or another. Krishna can do the same thing because he is Yogeshwar, the supreme uh, magician. Sometimes magici magicians are called illusionists because they know how to create an illusion. So that illusion is for the atheists. The one time uh, I was having, uh, I invited this Sikh gentleman in uh, Delhi to to have lunch in uh, uh, Govinda's restaurant in the Delhi temple, which is a very nice restaurant. And while we were enjoying Mahaprasadam, he told me, look, I like you. You're a nice person. You invited me here free lunch. I have to tell you the truth. I said, oh, okay. What is the truth? He said, your God is an ordinary man. He was killed by a hunter and he left his body. I said, well, do you actually believe that? He said, yes. And I want to let you know this because you're a nice young man. I don't want you to be misled by your religion. I said, well, the person that's misled here is yourself. <laughs> it's not me. I said, uh, if you actually believe that, you have been bewildered because you're too sinful in your life. He was like, you know, insulted when I said that. I said, you're a very sinful person. And, and the proof is that you're, you just blaspheme Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And you should stop immediately because it's very detrimental for you uh, you'll be forced to take birth and death continually and suffer by such false ideas that are blasphemous so he didn't understand what i was talking about uh, because he was convinced that krishna is an ordinary man who has an ordinary body material body just like us and the proof was he got shot in the foot by a hunter and he died well uh, I tried to explain to him the way Prabhupada is explaining here that it was a magical trick. That, uh, and it's, it's the trick, the atheist, to believe that God is not, a, uh, that Krishna is not God. But it doesn't trick devotees. Just like when Nishringadev appeared in this fantastical form, almost everyone was bewildered, but Prahlad Maharaj was not bewildered. He was not afraid because he recognized this is my Lord appearing in this special form in order to save me and to uh, establish the principles of religion, uh, of, of Dharma. So, because my father is so uh, sinful and, and, and committing so many outrageous activities, the Lord has appeared to set things straight. So Prahlad Maharaj, although he's a five-year-old boy, he was not fooled. But everybody else was frightened and uncertain. And uh, this is uh, not that they were sinful people, like Brahma is not a, a sinful person, Lakshmi is not a sinful person, but they were uh, frightened by the form of the Shringadev, where Prahlad Maharaj was not frightened at all. He, he felt protected by the Lord. So... Uh, but it's definitely a case of sinful people. They are easily bewildered when it comes to the subject of Krishna. So, therefore, we should always reserve our judgment uh, to 
first hear the explanation of the Acharyas before we come to any conclusions about anything in the scripture. And all the explanations are there. It's just you have to be patient enough to hear regularly Srimad Bhagavatam to clear away any doubts that one may have. We should have complete faith that every question has been answered already in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. It's just a question of patience to go through all this fantastic literature and uh, hear it attentively. So, uh, Prabhupada explains, uh, because uh, Krishna has no material body, under the circumstances, the Lord's dying or quitting his body is like the jugglery of a magician. The magician shows by his tricks that he is cut to pieces, burnt to ashes, or made unconscious by hypnotic influences. But all are false shows only. Factually, the magician himself is neither burnt to ashes nor cut to pieces, nor is he dead or unconscious at any stage of his magical demonstration. Similarly, the Lord has his eternal forms of unlimited variety, of which the fish incarnation, as was exhibited within this universe, is also one. Because there are innumerable universes, somewhere or other the fish incarnation must be manifesting his pastimes without cessation. How can Prabhupada make that statement? Well, it's based on a priori truths of the Vedas. A priori means the self-evident truths. So, uh, the, the Lord has uh, uh, has like eternal forms and some, sometimes temporary forms for a particular purpose. All the eternal forms have eternal planets in the Vaikuntha Lokas. And the non-eternal forms are, are temporarily manifested for a specific purpose. Okay, so he's saying, because there are innumerable universes, somewhere or other the fish incarnation must be manifesting his pastimes without cessation. So this is called... Uh, uh, I, I, I forget the exact term, Nymitic and Nityamitic, I think, are the terms. I'll look it up and uh, uh, say it exactly right tomorrow. Anyway, uh, in this verse, the particular word date, eternally accepted, and not the word ditva, accepted for the occasion, is used. Okay, so, uh, therefore, when it refers to the matcha fish, it uses the word date. Therefore, the matcha fish is an eternal manifestation of the Lord. The idea is that the Lord does not create the fish incarnation. He eternally has such a form. And the appearance and disappearance of such an incarnation serves particular purposes. In the Bhagavad Gita 7, 24 and 25, the Lord says, and so forth. So tomorrow I'll explain more explicitly and uh, with the exact wording, uh, what is the difference between uh, the eternal forms of the Lord and forms that are uh, that he manifests for uh, pur uh, specific purposes in the material world. Okay, so are there any questions?